Well guys, the show's over and uh, while we're here in Southampton, we're actually going to go visit the Team O uh, factory, their offices. Yep. Um, I didn't do a very good job repacking <laughs> Kika's jacket after those test videos we did in Canada. So Lauren in invited us over to repack her jacket and um, yeah, get a tour of the Timo workshop. Factory. Oh, wrong door. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Guys, you remember Lauren? Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's a puppy mascot. There is a puppy mascot. Yes. Yes. <laughs> they are totally repackable, so if they inflate whilst you're at sea, you can yeah, repack them on the boat. And then what we recommend is that once a year you have an annual service. So at the moment, if you're in the UK, the best thing to do is to send it back to Timo and we'll do it ourselves for Timo life jackets. But we are pro appointing service centres all over the world at the moment. You don't have to ship your jacket all the way back to us here in the UK and get it serviced. A service centre locally can do it for you and they'll either they'll do all the checks and they'll either pass or fail it. Um, and make sure that it's good to go again. So. Good deal. All right, I'm just gonna repack him. So here's the leg part here, and then the back legs here. The back toe? Yeah. The back, back toe this, is, this is his back toes right here. Yeah. These are his back toes. Okay, All right, so repacking. We're gonna take the, this bit. Put these in here. Yeah. And then, oh, you gotta put this, you gotta put this bit back up. No, these, these, All the you, way gotta, copy. you gotta, you gotta close that part, bud. You gotta close that part. <laughs> It's kind of crazy how you like it. The AIS and the inflate tube is here, but when I repacked it, it was like down there. It's kind of crazy that it can actually you can move it up that much, but it yeah. makes this bit a lot less packed for yeah, sure. Because exactly. then all of it's up here, like on your shoulder, out of the way. Yeah, yeah, Groovy. exactly. And it should still sit quite nicely in your hands. Like yeah. there should be quite a lot of curve in the shoulder still, so that when you put this back on next time, it's going to sit nicely off your neck. Uh, well, my brother Oscar started the business originally and um, he wanted to have his own sailing projects and so his friends at uni used to joke and say that he was Team Oscar Mead which over time got shortened to Team O um, and then when we came to start the business it was kind of an idea, a name that had been kicked around for a while and it just kind of seemed like the right one to go with um, and also the O flag is your man overboard flag which kind of works perfectly for a life jacket business. A like, double meaning word. Exactly. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Oh my gosh. He's taking us on a factory tour. Come on, being cool again, let's do it. Don't mind me. And the factory tour starts now. <laughs> so we've got um, all the different machines do different jobs in here. So Lou is making care bags at the moment that our life jackets come in. But this is where all of it happens. This is where we build the actual jacket. From scratch, yeah. So we have um, rolls of fabric turn up here, and then a business locally laser cuts them for us into the panel shapes. Um, and then the team will assemble it. Um, we do different stages of assembly at different times in the month. All of your <laughs> sewing, everything's done in the UK? UK fabric? 100% yeah. done in the UK. Um, so the bladders are made on the Isle of Wight. That's pretty much the only bit that isn't made in-house. Um, and the rest we do here. This is Design HQ. This is this is the coffee room, the, coffee. the, the lounge. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is where you come to take a nap. <laughs> just kind of talk about um, our own sailing, but also what's going on in the industry. Um, so I think in Timo it's kind of unique because everybody sails. Like we're basically always out there doing the sports we're designing for, which I think makes a big difference. It does, because yeah. it means that you know why you're designing and what yeah. you want out of it as well. But also it's like the feedback that you guys gave us being like, we really need a hook, uh, like a loop to hang our life jackets up when we're not sailing. Mm -hmm. It's stuff like that. It's actually really, ultimately you end up with a much better life jacket. So this is just one where we're in development at the moment, for instance, where that shape will have started off as a drawing in a notebook, um, then been put onto paper, scanned into the computer and refined and then ultimately cut out of fabric probably 15 different times yeah. to find out the size that actually works the best. Um, and that, that will have come as one, two, three, four, five panels in that little piece on its own. Because <laughs> it's all layers and it all have to, you have to fit yeah. all the shapes and all the, the styles yeah. and fabrics. Ah, yes, oh, cool. <laughs> There's more. <laughs> in the boxes is individual pieces of the life jacket. So in all these boxes, make one life jacket. Oh my goodness. 
How many disassembled jackets do you think is in that closet? There's probably about 200 life jackets in there. We sell them as quickly as we can make them. Yeah. Um, at the moment, there's like, there's never a quiet day, is there? Yeah. <laughs> Considering that there's less than 10 people working on the jacket, you know, it makes That's yeah. the thing, yeah. I think a lot of starting your own business is being self-taught and being open to the idea of figuring out what looks good or what works. That instant understanding of what your product does, I think, is really important. So we spend quite a lot of time in here talking about, is this, is it obvious how people should use this? Um, and is this intuitive, basically? And always trying to work towards making it easier to understand and easier to use. So. How long of a design process was it to get from, like, sort of concept, we want to make a life jacket, till um, actually selling an actual life jacket? Quite a long time. Um, so it was designed after, unfortunately, after a fatality in one of the races here in the UK in 2011. And Oscar sort of said, that's ridiculous. Your life jacket should tow you face up, not face down. Mm -hmm. I think it was kind of the first time that certainly we had become aware that this was a problem with existing life jackets. We did go and show it to some existing life jacket businesses and they weren't very interested in it, which was kind of fascinating in itself. Mm. Um, and so we decided this is something we're going to take on. I think because people hadn't really known about it beforehand, um, and also we're all sailing that much more quickly these days. Mm -hmm. Like you guys with your cruising now, your, your, even your cruising speed is a lot faster than it would have been 30 years ago. So 30 years ago, maybe the face down problem wasn't such an issue, and so people weren't aware of it. But as our boat technology's got better and everybody's sailing faster, regardless of what kind of sailing you're doing, suddenly it's something that everyone actually needs to think about. As we've had like the production teams growing, people have said to us, well, have you thought about making this a different way? It's more efficient. Have you thought about sewing this bit first instead of that bit first? Because mm -hmm. it's going to make it so much easier to do that. This is Fred. Hi Fred, how are you? How was uh how do you like the job here in Timo? He pleased the fifth, he doesn't want to see anything. Strong silent time. So normally what we do is we will put him into a conventional life jacket um, where you tethered on at the front but it doesn't have back toe and then we'll chuck him into the water next to um, someone from Timo who's wearing a back toe life jacket and just see how they perform side by side. because um, it's quite shocking really, like you as you speed the boat up, um, yeah. Fred's reaction as in like the way his body starts to move through the water is kind of demonstrative of what would happen if you were wearing a regular life jacket so he's obviously face down yeah and you can as the boat speed goes up you're like yeah you definitely have head injuries by now like or a broken neck or something so yeah. um, whereas our whoever's wearing the back toe is obviously completely fine so it's crazy right because you, you almost need a dummy to test the front toe because it's more dangerous <laughs> but the back toe you can actually use a you real person we, don't, real we don't have a friend we just, we <laughs> yeah. just had a key yeah. but that's why i would really yeah. slow but yeah, if we were going any fast, it'd be dangerous for me. Yeah. But so Fred weighs about the same as a normal. He does, yeah. He's anatomically weighted to react like a human body okay. in the water. Um, I think he weighs about 65 kilos. And when you're trying to get him, and he's wet, obviously, like getting him back into the boat is pretty difficult. Yeah. Well, it's been about a week since the boat show and we have been asleep and catching up on a few things and just resting because we haven't had a chance to rest since the Bahamas, maybe? I don't know, New York? So the weather's pretty good today and we have some wind and uh, we're going to slip our lines and head south into the Solent and probably turn into Portsmouth because there's some cool stuff to see and do down there. So we're going to kind of make a hop and go sailing today. What's it like sailing in the rain? <laughs> um, well, around this area, we have to time it with the tide and current. And there's supposed to be a little a potential blow coming in in the next few days. So we want to be in a protected uh, marina by then. And where we were in Town Key just was pretty exposed. But yeah, we have to time it with the tide. And <laughs> rain or shine, this is our window. So we're taking it. <laughs> Uh, it's a 
like a, we're rinsing our gear. I don't think we've rinsed our gear since the ocean passage, so this is a perfect opportunity for that. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> well, I guess welcome to the UK where it's pouring rain one second and then it's bright and sunny the next and then there's another cloud going behind us and then there's a freaking rainbow <laughs> right on the other side. So it's like all scenarios in one day. But it's uh, it's pretty nice and calm. We're beam reaching towards Portsmouth, uh, towards the Solent and it's only blowing 12 knots and it's it's really nice right now. I guess uh, we'll see in five minutes what happens. <laughs> uh, they say that you need to dress for all three seasons here in the UK every day. Right now it's warm, almost too warm to be wearing these big thick jackets. It's also sunny. And sunny, <laughs> but we're still surrounded by rain and wind, so we're keeping them on because it's probably gonna rain another five minutes. <laughs> Luckily though, it's not really cold today. No, it's so, nice actually. Yeah. It's, it's not cold at all. I like sailing in the Solent so far because there's no waves, so it's like super chill yeah, all the time. I don't know if there's a current that's with us. I think we're at slack. Yeah, I think we're pretty much at slack. So if anything, there might good. still be a little bit of current behind us, but we should be getting into Portsmouth with a little bit of current behind us, which is what we're hoping for. Yeah. Because yeah, around here, um, current is like one of the major things you have to navigate around. But there's some pretty big tides around here and they produce some pretty big currents. So you definitely don't want to be sailing against a five knot current, especially if the wind is against it as well. So yeah, we're just going to be playing with the tides for the whole time we're here. For like a year and a half. <laughs> yeah, for the rest of our lives. It's not no, as big of a deal in the Bahamas where the tides are only like one or two knots unless they're funneling out of a current or out of a cut. But here is a little bit different. I'm gonna take us off and, uh, and start to get a suntan, I think. Gotta absorb the rays while I can. You, see, you know you can still get a suntan even with clouds. Yeah. All right. Because the UV rays still penetrate Ooh. through the clouds and into your skin. I'm all over that. It's getting hot. <laughs> it's getting hot in here. So hot! Take off all your clothes. Of course! <laughs> Those things go so fast! It's insane! How fast is it going? Red Jet 4. Uh, speed over ground. 37 knots. That thing does 37 knots. He comes by us like we're standing still. You know what's crazy though is that those uh, F50, the, the CLGP boats, mm -hmm. go even faster than that. Really? They do 50 knots. Wow. It's like they're floating on water. Portsmouth, where we're heading. Yeah. Uh, apparently it's like a super duper busy commercial harbor. We've got like normal small vessel traffic coming out of there, sometimes race boats coming out of there. We've got a bunch of ferries coming in out of there, cargo vessels and military vessels. Super busy, so there's like this tiny little uh, like small boat, small vessel channel on the side, which we have to like sneak up the side. Okay. If it doesn't clock around a little bit more, we can probably sail in. But it's only like 0.7 miles, so motoring that far won't be an issue at all. It's fun sailing on the Solent. There's a uh, there's always current to contend with, but there's, there's also no waves. yeah, there's hardly any waves. There's just a little bit of wind chop. So. Although it's blowing 25 knots and we're healed over, it's, uh, it kind of reminds us of the Bahamas, except a little bit colder and a little bit wetter and a little bit grayer. <laughs> we're not sailing in bikinis up here. We're going to be turning in between two shallow sections. Yeah, there's a bit of a channel that cuts off this way that's not the, uh, the official shipping channel that we can sneak through. But it's low tide, so we kind of have to pay attention. So I'm going to hold off for a minute and then like, we're right there. across there yeah, we can yeah. start making our turn. Alright, we got to start paying attention. <laughs> See you later! Yeah, this is the marina we were supposed to be in right here, and we're going to be in that marina right there. It's not much further away. <laughs> Thank you.
Man, that was a tight fit. <laughs> you did good? We did good, yeah. Good job. Ooh, as I splash into the water. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think about docking so far? I think we're getting better at it. We are getting better at it. <laughs> we've done a whole bunch of side tying in the past two weeks while we've been here. At the boat show, I think we docked and undocked, what, eight times or ten times or something like that? I think yeah, we, ten. we would go sailing every day. So. Yeah, so we undocked ten times and redocked ten times. And at the town quay, we undocked and redocked a few times, but they're all side tie. So going bow in or stern in is still a little bit hairy, but I think we're getting better at it. Especially here, because it's like so tight. I think um, we're getting better at it. I yeah, we're getting better at it. We're learning. Uh, we're a work in progress, definitely. Super and, excited um, for all the other things we're going to be doing uh, these yeah. next couple of weeks. I'm pretty excited too. There's, we got a bunch of fun things planned, and Portsmouth is a pretty cool place to explore. So yes. we're excited to bring you guys along with us. Definitely. But until then, cheers. cheers. <laughs> I don't know what I was I was gonna do peace but I was gonna do bye and then